recently, several movies have been released in the United States telling the story of Wing Chun Kung Fu Grandmaster Yip Man. Yip Man was a famous instructor in Hong Kong and was responsible for teaching the legendary king of Kung Fu, Bruce Lee. Locally, we have an instructor who is recognized as one of the nation's leading experts in the Yip Man family method. That instructor is Master Tony Massingill, owner of Efficient Warrior Academy in Yorktown, Virginia. Welcome to Good Morning Peninsula. Our guest this morning is Kung Fu Master Tony Massingill. Master Massingill is the owner of the Efficient Warrior Academy in Yorktown, Virginia. He is also a published author. He writes for Martial Arts Masters Magazine and has several authored books on the subject of self-protection and is recognized as one of the nation's leading experts in Ip Man Wing Chun Kung Fu system. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks. Yeah, basically, I understand that Ip Man was the teacher of the legendary Bruce Lee, that you've trained in Hong Kong under the instruction of Ip Man's sons. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, uh, Ip Man was uh, Bruce Lee's teacher. Uh, he was the uh, most famous grandmaster of the uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu system. Wing Chun was actually developed two or three hundred years ago uh, in the Shaolin Temple. And it was actually developed by the first two people in our lineage are female. Uh, Shaolin nun and then her first student was female, a woman named Yim Wing Chun, the person from whom the uh, system got its name. Uh, the system's been passed down over a number of generations and it finally came to uh, Yip Man in Foshan, China, uh, where he started learning. And they moved to Hong Kong, and, and that's where he uh, began his, his public teaching. And he taught Bruce Lee. He taught a number of other people as well, as including his own son, Zip Chun and Ip Ching. Uh, my direct teacher, Sufu Samuel Kwok, is the, uh, the most senior worldwide representative of both sons. As a matter of fact, uh, he's the only person that's ever been certified at a master level under both of Yip Man's sons, Yip Chun and Ip Ching. And through him, I've had the opportunity to train in Foshan, China, and Hong Kong directly with Yip Chun and Yip Ching. Uh, Master Kwok and I uh, co-authored the book, Mastering Wing Chun, The Keys to Yip Man's Kung Fu, and it's the uh, first book that's ever had the full endorsement of both sons. In fact, they both wrote forwards for the book, and the book was put in the Yip Man Museum in Foshan, China in 2007. We were brought over for a big celebration over there for that. Okay. And I understand that you've been doing martial arts for a very long time and have trained in many different methods in addition to Wing Chun Kung Fu. Can you tell us a little about their background? Well, uh, I started in the martial arts when I was five. My parents put me in the martial arts at a uh, local rec center. And I started studying Judo. And from there I studied Taekwondo and Kempo Karate. Uh, I got instructor levels, uh, black belt levels in those systems. Uh, I've also studied over the years uh, stick and knife systems, uh, Muay Thai or Thai boxing. Uh, and Chinna, the Chinese art of capture, control, and destruction, where it's the, the foundation art from which systems like Jiu Jitsu and, and Aikido and Hapkido had their origin. And uh, I'm a certified instructor in those systems as well. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a series of videotapes uh, that are put out, or DVDs that are put out through Masters Magazine, uh, Empire Media. And uh, one of those is on the Chinna system as well as several on Wing Chun. Uh, but I've been training in martial arts since I was five. I'm, I'm 50 now, so this, I've got 45 years in the martial <laughs> arts. Uh, I had studied those systems uh, up until about 1979 when I first ran into Wing Chun. And uh, I received a master level certification in the Wing Chun system. As a matter of fact, I'm the first generation of non-Chinese to earn a master level certification under the Yip Man family lineage, the direct family lineage through Yip Chun, Yip Ching, and Samuel Kwok. Wow. So, so you focus on what you call real-world martial arts. Now, how is this different from the, meth from the methods taught by other schools or, you know, the popular MMA methods? Well, uh, there's, there's a big difference between sport and real self-protection. Uh, a couple of things really set them apart. One is when you're in sport, you don't have to consider, concern yourself with things like, uh, you know, legal ramifications to your actions. Uh, you don't have to understand uh, predatory psychology, understanding the methods that, that predators use to victimize people in the streets. Uh, you're going to find a, a big difference in the methods. In a sport, you know who, what, when, where, how, and why the fight's going to take place. You don't have to worry about your environment because you know 
the, the basic area the fight's going to take place, you know your surroundings, what kind of surface the fight's going to take place on, you know you don't have to worry about trip hazards, you don't have to worry about second or third opponents coming into the fight, you don't have to worry about weapons being presented, I don't have to worry about, you know, running into a curve, a corner, a staircase or anything else in a fight when it's a sporting environment. In the street, you have to worry about all those things. Uh, the environment can be used either as a weapon against you or a weapon by you if you understand how to use your environment. In a street situation, I may not have to, to protect only myself, I may have to protect my wife or a child or something along that line. So these things have to come into play as well, and these are things that you don't have to think about at all in a sport-based system. And you react the way you train. We train to develop conditioned reflex. And if you're training for a sporting environment, you're not going to develop the conditioned reflexes you need in a street environment. Uh, we had a saying in law enforcement, and, and I spent 25 years in, in public safety between the police and fire department. Uh, I've been a police officer, a firefighter, and a, a medic on the streets. So I've been on the streets. I know what a real fight is. And uh, we used to have a saying in, in law enforcement training that you don't rise to the occasion, you sink to your level of training. So you're not going to train for sport and then the combat fairy taps you on the head with his wand and makes you capable to defend yourself against a, a violent street predator. It just doesn't happen. Uh, there are rules in a sporting environment and with the introduction of even one rule into what you're considering when you're training, it makes it not realistic. And so we focus our training on, on the real world environment. As a matter of fact, the uh, column, one of the columns I write for Masters Magazine is the Efficient Warrior column, which is the reality-based column for the magazine. Oh, okay. And, um, well, earlier you also explained to our staff that you teach adults and children different methods. Why is that? Well, if you go to a lot of schools, and, and I have a background, yeah, I've got black belts in Taekwondo, I've got black belts in Kempo, and a number of other systems. And so I'll go back to my training in those to, to give you an example. Uh, if you enter one of those types of schools, the curriculum they teach the adults is pretty much the exact same curriculum they teach children. If you look, they're, they're doing the same floor exercises, the same training drills, they do the same forms to get their belts. It's all the exact same system. Now, you look at our education system, you don't teach a college student the same curriculum you teach a kindergartner. If you uh, are teaching the same curriculum, then either the kindergartner or the college student is going to be lost. They're not going to get something out of the class. The adult have much different needs than those of children. Children need the discipline of the martial arts, and they need the structure of the martial arts. They also need what I teach is age-appropriate self-protection. We don't teach any sport-based methods, even in our children's program. Uh, I find that it's confusing to children to uh, be told you know, don't misuse what you're learning, don't bully other kids, don't hit other kids, only use the martial arts as a last resort, you know, do everything you can to avoid the fight. Now let's go to this tournament this weekend and beat up little Tommy over there and bring home a trophy. Yeah, that's a problem, and kids have a hard time with that kind of mixed message. Uh, so what we teach the children is age-appropriate self-protection. But what's appropriate for a seven or eight-year-old would not be suitable for an adult who's being mugged in the street. Chances are little Tommy is going to get into an altercation over somebody taking his seat at the lunch table, not over somebody trying to take his wallet or his life. So, you know, the methodology has to be quite different. And if you put the adult in the same curriculum as the child or the child in the same curriculum as an adult, it's not going to uh, serve the student. So we keep those classes separate, we keep those classes and curriculum separate, so that each of them get fed properly what they need in their training. Okay. Well, Mr. Massengill, we appreciate you sharing your time with us today. And uh, before, before we let you out, uh, could you please give our viewers your contact information? Yeah, uh, we're in Yorktown, Virginia. We're at the Grafton Shopping Center uh, on Route 17. We're right next to Wawa, if people are familiar with the area. Uh, the, the address is 5736 George Washington Memorial Highway. Uh, our website is Efficient Warrior, E F F I C I E N T W A R R I O R dot com. Uh, they can also reach us by our phone number 757 846 1188. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. All right, well, thanks a lot for your time, Mr. Massengill, and thank you everyone for watching. Good morning, Peninsula. Thank you.